Now earlier in this course, when we first covered the init method, we briefly mentioned how it is known as a dunder or magic method. Dunder was short for the fact that it had two double underscores. Now we didn't really cover why it had those two double underscores, but now let's dive right into that. It turns out that Python has many methods with double underscores that a user can define for a class. And the idea is that these methods allow the instance to emulate some sort of built-in behavior. For example, can two of the instances be added with a plus? Can the instance be put in a print statement? Or how about can the instance be deleted with the del command? With this, the instance can now behave more like some of the built-in types that we saw, such as an integer or a list or a string, because these you can delete it, print it, or add them together, okay? And what's cool about this is that since these are methods and hence functions, you can now define what you want to do under these situations. With the init method, we saw that it emulated initializing an instance so the programmer can define what to do at initialization. But now, let's cover some of these other methods. Let's first cover the call method. So let's revisit our class cube. Now the init allowed us to create an instance by inputting the side length value. But what if we wanted to call an instance by inputting side length? So basically, you could change the side length by simply just calling the instance. So we could achieve that by doing this, def call then self. I'm gonna go ahead and copy this code because it's the same. Okay. So now if I run this, if I create an instance of the cube with sideline three, so I'm getting the sideline attribute and then the properties. If I wanted to increment the sideline by three, I could simply do that like this. So I can now simply just call the instance. So when you say you're calling an instance, all you really do is you get that variable name with the parentheses and then you input the inputs that the call method specifies. So this is how you would call it. And now if I run this, okay, and if I try to access those same attributes and properties, you can now see how they have updated, okay? So that is how using the call dunder method works. Next, let's cover the del dunder method. This method allows the instance to emulate what would happen when you use the del command on the instance. Okay, so let me take all this out. Now let's say we had a class called session, so class session. And when creating an instance of session, we just define how long it is. So the duration, self dot duration equals duration. And now let's say each time we create a session, that session contains sensitive data. So whenever the user wants to end or delete the session, um, we want to prompt them with a message that they should be careful because they might lose sensitive data. So the way that we can achieve this is we can say def del self and then print our prompt. Potentially fatal action sensitive data may be lost, okay? So now let me run this. If I now create a session with a duration of 10 minutes and I try to delete the session, I am now prompted with that message. Potentially fail action, sensitive data may be lost. And just to see that this session is deleted, I can now try to reaccess it my sesh and you can see that it is no longer there now i just want to reiterate something earlier that i said in the course in regards to the del command is that whenever you use this you're not actually deleting the object you're only deleting the variable name that is binded to that object the garbage collector is what eventually deletes the object so just keep this in mind 
Next, let's cover the str dunder method. So let's revisit the employee class once more. Now on top of what we have here, let's say we want to give the user the ability to get information about an employee put together into one statement every time we input that employee instance into a print statement. Well, this could be achieved by the str dunder method because that method emulates that print behavior. So we can write def str self and I will return an f string. So return f string self dot name is a self dot title with years of experience performing at a grade of and now for emphasis, I will put an emoji for the five different performance levels. And now I will go ahead and create those emojis. So basically, if employee performs at a level of one, they get a sad crying emoji. Level of two, get a sad emoji. Level of three is pretty neutral, they're indifferent. Level of four, they're happy. And level of five they're very happy so they're crying a little bit so now let's run this and create some instances so i will create three instances frank rick bob frank is a technician with 10 years of experience he is excellent rick is an engineer with three years of experience who is average and bob is a manager with 20 years of experience and he is pretty terrible okay so now I can get all their information by simply printing their instances. So running this, I get their information. And this was all thanks to the str dunder method. And that's how it works. Lastly, let's cover the add dunder method. So let's create a class called land, class land. It will take as input how many acres that land is. So acres i will default that to a thousand acres so self dot acres equals acres okay and just to really instill the previous method that we cover i'll also include that as well def str self and then i will return f string this land has acres okay now the way that the add dunder method will look like is like this def add self and now you want to include other other basically takes on what the other object would be after the plus sign so this add dunder method is assuming that your object is at the beginning of the plus sign and the other is after that so that distinction is important so what I'll do is if is instance, you use is instance to check the type of an object, other is another land object, then I can simply say return a new instance of land, but with their acres added. And if this other object isn't a land object, for now we'll just assume that it is a number, but Obviously, it could be other types. Assume it is a number. And then simply, I'll take this statement, put it here. I'll take the land out. And then since we're assuming the other is a number, you're just adding the other, okay? So let me run this. And now let's create some land instances. So land A has 100 acres and the land B has 10,000 acres and if I were to create a third land that had the total acres of the boat then previously what I would have to do is create a new instance and then say land A dot acres plus land 
B dot acres. Okay. But because I have this add under method, I could achieve the same result simply by doing this land D equals land A plus land B. So that's the power of the add dunder method. Okay. And so I will print land C and then I will also print land D. And this print will also work because remember, I have the str method here. So let me run that. And indeed it works, okay? And uh, just for safe measure, let's try doing the other case of this else statement. So remember, I'm assuming it is a number. So I will say land E equals land C plus 2000 acres. So now if I do print land E, I get that result, okay? Mm -hmm.